Do you have high B12 level and want to know how or why that's occurring? My name is Dr. Taranella, and in this video, I will share with you how those that are not taking B12 end up with elevated B12 levels or high B12 levels, how this is linked with cancer, and what could be going on with your body that drives this process. Mostly, it has to do with white blood cells, but I'll save the details on that for the rest of the video. This and all my other videos are made to help you go beyond basic health, so I hope this one helps you do that as well. It is made to help you, but it's not tailored to your specific medical needs or advice. So please read this disclaimer. I originally posted a video regarding poor B12 absorption or B12 deficiency symptoms. I actually don't remember which video sparked it, but someone started asking in the comment section about elevated B12 and they posted a research study which talked about the relationship of elevated B12 and different types of cancer. I wasn't fully aware of this connection until reading the paper. And after looking at this, I started to use my own knowledge of genetics and functional medicine to dive deeper into this topic and I found it fascinating. As I've said in previous videos, this is simply a tool to further understand what's going on in your body. The first thing is that elevated B12 really doesn't mean a whole lot until you've done at least a second or third layer of investigation. The first layer is always going to be, do you actually have elevated B12 from consuming B12? That may consist of repeating the test several times and double checking, not taking any, etc. But once you've gone through that first layer, layer is where things kind of get interesting in terms of the physiology or the problems that's going on in your body. Now, outside of kidney or liver problems, it mostly comes down to the binding proteins that carry the B12 throughout your body, and that specifically transport B12 into the cell. Most of the issues with ongoing B12 elevation or high B12 is from the B12 not getting into the cells in sufficient quantities. Now, just as a side note, this doesn't mean that your body's not absorbing the B12. You can kind of say that your cells aren't absorbing it, but really you are absorbing it because we usually use absorption when referring to the digestive tract because it's in your blood. You're definitely getting it through the digestive tract, but it's not penetrating or getting inside the cells. And that is a common thing that happens with elevated B12. Now, this does not mean necessarily that your intracellular levels are low, but more so that the amount of binding protein is excessively high. This leads to a low saturation of B12 on the B12 binding proteins despite sufficient levels of B12. And I know this is kind of confusing, so you can think of it like this. You have a group of people with a destination they want to go to, we'll say New York City. And in order to get to downtown New York City, you need some kind of transportation to get there. Let's say there are 100 people that you want to get to this destination, and you can only take one person per transport vehicle. Now, let's say there are three types of transport vehicles available. They all look the same, but only one of them actually knows how to get to your destination or can actually get into New York City. The other two are kind of like getting into a cab or an Uber that doesn't really know where they're going. But once you get in, you can't really get off easily. You can't just switch cabs. You can't just switch Ubers. So obviously the analogy here is that the 100 people that are trying to get to New York City is the B12 and New York City is inside the cell. And in the case of elevated B12 that's not from increasing consumption, this problem is equivalent to increasing the number of Ubers that don't really know where they're going. So let's say we start with 100 of these cabs or Uber drivers that, and they're evenly distributed. There's 33, 33, and 33, and that's the normal situation. In the situation with elevated B12, when you're having this problem going on, the person might have two times the amount of Uber drivers that actually don't know how to get to New York City. And of course, they're still coming and picking up passengers and taking them who knows where, but they're not actually getting to New York City. Some of the passengers are getting picked up by the Uber drivers that can get to New York City, but because there are more of the cabs that don't know where they're going, the likelihood is less of them are actually getting to downtown New York City. This is going to translate into normal serum B12 levels or a really high serum B12 levels. That's because what we're measuring is the amount of passengers or B12 that are in the streets. We're not actually measuring what's in New York City 
just in the streets themselves. Now, I say that it can be normal because in some cases the levels will be normal, even though you have a lot of these Uber drivers that can't get to downtown New York City or transcobalamins that aren't getting into the cell. It takes a while for those to build up. So in some cases, it may be normal for quite some time. It also translates into a situation where the amount of B12 inside the cell, or for the purpose of this analogy, inside New York City is actually low or not really reflecting what's going on in the streets themselves. So you can have a high level in the blood or in the streets and a low level inside the cell or inside New York City. How does this actually happen and how do we test to know what kind of Uber or cab drivers we have? Testing for the types of Uber drivers that you have in your blood or the types of transcobalamin in your blood is not actually possible at this time. You can only test the total number of Uber drivers that are currently available to pick up passengers. This is called the B12 binding capacity unsaturated, or put another way, the unsaturated B12 binding capacity. The unsaturated part means that there are no passengers in the car. The saturated part would be the ones with passengers. So again, the test is called B12 binding capacity unsaturated, and if you have a high value for your unsaturated B12 binding capacity, it means that a lot of the Uber drivers don't have passengers or a lot of the transcobalamin don't have B12. Then what you want to do is pair this with your B12 value. If it's high too, it means that you're making a lot of these transcobalamins in general. The body is typically going to make the amount and number of Uber drivers or transcobalamins that's proportional to what it needs to get into the city or into the cell. If there's a bunch of Uber drivers with no passengers, it means that you're making this transcobalamin in excess of what the body needs, and likely there's some kind of pathology going on with your white blood cells. Now, you can only accurately say that if you get that test done in conjunction with your B12 level. If all you do is a serum B12 level, it's a lot harder to say what's going on and why it's like that. But if you get a B12 level and you get this unsaturated B12 binding capacity test and it shows high, medium, or low, you can infer a lot more things from that test and understand what's going on in your body. There's a separate kind of test that looks at the total Uber drivers on the road in general, and that's called holotranscobalamin, and it's measuring the saturated and unsaturated transcobalamin levels. This test is available in the U.S., and it is available, I believe, in the U.K. and, I think, Europe. And doing this test along with the serum B12 levels, you can deduce the same information. So what does all this mean for you? Well, if you have a high vitamin B12 level, it could be that your body's making too many Uber drivers in general. Most of the time, when this happens, it's from cells that make the type of B12 transporters that don't actually help them get into the cell. And in our analogy, these are the ones, the Uber drivers that can actually get into the city. This problem comes from a family of white blood cells that produce granules. They're called granulocytes. And these are things like neutrophils, eosinophils, mast cells, and basophils. These are all types of white blood cell, and their main function of these cells is to respond and to protect the body from infections and other threats like allergens and parasites. If and when the amount of these granulocyte type of cells increase, so do their granules. And these granules contain the carriers for B12 called transcobalamins. But they mainly, again, make the one and the three, the Uber drivers that don't know where they're going. So why do you actually have more of these one and three transcobalamins? Well, again, let's be clear, just because you have elevated B12 levels does not mean that you have this going on. But there are several other things that could be causing elevated B12 levels that I have discussed in other videos. If you do have this kind of picture going on, it means that your body is making more of these kinds of white blood cells, either because of some kind of infectious type of process occurring, or it could be mast cell activation, mast cell activation syndrome, or other mast cell disorders. It could also be some kind of bone marrow disorder, even something like cancer. And yes, cancer is associated with high B12 because of its link to these white blood cells. Not all types of cancer, but mainly white blood cell type cancers. So how do you know which thing you have going on or what can you do about this? Well, you can check out my book on Amazon, Don't B12 Deficient. 
And the title suggests that it's all about B12 deficiency, but actually there are several helpful things in here, including two specific chapters on elevated B12 levels, including a high B12 action plan. In addition, in the next video on this topic, we're going to look at some more specific details on elevated B12 and cancer. I want to share what some of the research is saying about this so you're better informed on this topic. All right, that's all I had on this topic, elevated B12 levels. If you do have questions about anything in this video or on this topic, drop those in the comment section. Be sure to look through some of my other videos on high B12 levels if you haven't checked those out already. There's some additional topics that are covered there. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.